A little while back, two polls were done. One sampled the US public, while the second sampled members of an organization that includes scientists and people interested in the science. The pollsters use the results to determine where scientists and the public have the biggest differences in opinion. You might expect it to be something political, like evolution or climate change. But it wasn't. It was whether GMO foods are safe. Buttered asparagus, mashed potatoes, and a special treat for them, chocolate layer cake pills. Are they? We use genetic engineering to give plants useful traits. We've made crops that resist viruses, or make proteins that kill the insect pests that eat them. We've made other crops that aren't harmed by a weed killer. And we've engineered rice to make an important vitamin. Golden rice is being marketed as the cure to vitamin A deficiency, a leading cause of blindness in the world. These crops have lowered pesticide use and increased farmers' income in developing countries. While an engineered crop is undoubtedly different, all of our crops are very different from how they started. Our crops are hybrids of different strains with many random mutations, both natural and made using radiation. Or here are two mutations in maize. GMOs have smaller and far more targeted changes than a crop strain does compared to its natural relatives. But people have always been uneasy with genetic engineering, starting back when we applied it to bacteria in the 1970s. You know what kind they are? All I know is that they came out of that test tube that you gave me. Then they're one of the kinds of bacteria that cause food to spoil. The controversy over genetic engineering followed to crops. People worry about the spread of engineered genes into the environment. The way GMO crops provide an advantage to large agricultural companies. And our increasing reliance on just a few strains of plants for our food. Combined, these worries have led to decades of protests, including arson and destroyed crops. Due to all of this, the use of GMOs in Europe has been severely limited, and the U.S. has even passed a law requiring foods containing GMOs to be labeled. But politics isn't driving the problems. Polls show equal concerns about GMO foods between conservative Republicans and liberal Democrats. So why are they wrong? Some of the controversy arises from issues related to whether a few companies have too much control over modern agriculture. Other issues focus on the danger of relying on a limited number of high-yield crop strains. That's not a problem specific to GMOs, though. It's just how agriculture works now. Genetic engineering involves inserting a short stretch of DNA into the genome of an organism, in this case a plant. That DNA will typically encode a couple of genes, at least one of which provides a useful function, like virus resistance. The modified DNA itself isn't dangerous, since the DNA of anything we eat gets broken up in our digestive tract. We also digest the proteins that the gene encodes. But, just in case, we've tested whether these proteins cause allergies before the engineering goes ahead. If GMO critics were right, wouldn't we be seeing lots of health problems tied to their use? Yet GMO crops have now undergone decades of testing and use, and no problems have been discovered. While a few small studies have suggested a link between GMOs and cancers, these studies have had glaring flaws. Too few animals, inconsistent results, and they've been impossible to repeat. If the engineered proteins were doing anything in our bodies, we'd probably see the effects during animal testing. Then we'd be seeing it in our cells, along with all the other plant and animal DNA from our food. Absolutely none of these things have been seen. While it is possible to make a GMO crop that isn't safe, what economic reason would a company have for doing that? Sure, there could be risks if people use the crops poorly. It's possible that the engineered genes could spread to the wild relatives of the crops. Insects could develop resistance to some of the crops we've engineered. But all things considered, these risks can be managed. And they're not risks to human health. So why are people so afraid of GMOs? One thing to consider is that fewer people than ever are involved in farming, which means that fewer people directly reap the benefits of GMO crops. Most of those benefits go to farmers. Lots of people don't trust the companies that dominate modern agriculture. Finally, some people may view genetic engineering as playing God and are uncomfortable with it. There is in this at least a hint of the moral problems posed by modern genetics. The leading poets, professors, and politicians could furnish genetic material for generations of offspring. Who is to decide? 
Religious dietary laws are the result of a deep-seated desire for food that's pure and natural. I mean, some of that's reasonable. We all want our food processed under clean conditions. But there's nothing natural about any of our crops. Remember what the ancestor of corn looks like? Given all these issues, it's unlikely the public will accept the science anytime soon. Mm -hmm.